calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, May 10th, 2021. As a preliminary matter, this is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Meyer is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, which encourages and allows open meetings of state agencies and local governments to be conducted remotely in order to mitigate transmission of COVID-19 virus. The governor's order, which you can find posted with agenda materials on the town website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. And further, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. I'll now turn to the first item on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. Uh, item two this evening is a request for a contractor drain layer license Asphalt Services, Inc., Rebecca Catino. Um, is the applicant here, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine? No, there's no Rebecca Catino, no. Okay, all right, um, I'll move to the board. Uh, Mr. Diggins? I move approval. Great, uh, Mr. Helmuth? I'll second that, no comments. Okay, okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan, any questions or comments? Uh, no questions, thank you. Okay, Mr. Hurd? No comments. Okay, thank you. Um, so on a motion made by Mr. Diggins, second by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Adams, vote. Great, thank you very much. Uh, item number three, appointments, scholarship fund review committee, and more for a term to expire 131 2024. Uh, is Miss Moore with us? She is. I'm promoting her right now, Mr. Oh, great. Hello. Hi, Miss yes, Moore. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little about, about yourself and, and why you're interested in serving on the committee. Absolutely. Um, so my profession, uh, I work at Tufts University and I'm a fellowship advisor. So I help uh, current undergraduates apply for nationally competitive awards. And um, I'm on the board of the National Association of Fellowship Advisors. Um, so that's why I'm interested in doing this. I'm really interested in sort of how decisions are made about how scholarships are um, you know, allotted to young people, um, a lot of issues around, you know, access and um, language and things like that. Uh, so I'm excited to be involved with this. I also am an Arlington parent. Um, I have a uh, five-year-old and a nine-year-old who is currently enrolled at Thompson School. Great, thank, th thank you very much. I'm now gonna turn it to the board for, for questions. Off to Helmut. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much for your interest in being willing to serve. Um, I noticed on your resume that uh, part of your past duties uh, for three years was diversity outreach coordinator, which is which is wonderful. Um, and um, not to spring it on you, it's okay if you haven't thought about it in this context. But do you have any sense for how you might how that uh, diversity inclusion uh, might inform your work on on this committee? Yeah, I mean. I guess, you know, part of it depends on what the current process is like, right? Um, but I would say, based on the work I've done at Tufts and the guidelines of the, you know, national organization that I uh, participate in, I think one of the big things would be um, conducting direct outreach among underrepresented communities. Right, and so trying to uh, meet students uh, where they are, right, and so rather than just advertising the, um, you know, maybe putting out more ads in the same places, for instance, and thinking of that as a more effective um, kind of outreach, we might instead um, go to like the um, like the Black Student Union at the high school, and I, you know, someone could go there directly and kind of talk about what the scholarships are, what they're looking for, things like that. That's terrific. Thank you. Uh, I forgot the most important uh, magic word, which is that I move approval, Mr. Chair. Um, right. And thank you again for uh, for that thoughtful response and for your willingness to serve. We would be very fortunate to to have you serve, Mr. I'd be really excited about it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Well, wholeheartedly endorse uh, second, Mr. Helmuth, my colleagues, um, vote for approval. Um, and I want to thank Ms. Moore for volunteering her time. And I, I kind of want to highlight one thing that my colleague has, as well as really put in a big ask that may not um, be part of um, <laughs> this appointment um, that we're appointing you to. Um, I, similar to, I saw that uh, under the Tufts Counseling Center, um, tutoring at risk and, and special needs students, um, in my, I have a, a personal family relationship with this, and I see uh, especially um, special needs students, um, whatever you can bring to the high functioning special yeah. needs students, which will be identified. Um, I know you're more than qualified to do that. Um, and I'm going to put one more thought before you. And if you can speak on that and or the other, the other, which is really not a part of, um, I think this appointment, but I advocate for it whenever I can. Um, regarding special needs students, um, the non-high functioning special needs students, um, when they hit the age of 22, there's really nothing for their parents, you know, and I'm thinking of, you know, <clears throat> a severely autistic, nonverbal 22 year old. Yep. Once you hit that 22, um, unless you put them in residential, there's really nothing out there. And I, I don't know that this is something that you can um, advocate for or come up with ideas, but my two questions I would pose to you are definitely an emphasis on the, the high functioning special needs students, not just at Arlington High School, but through our lab co collaborative, which means they're in Lexington, Arlington, Belmont, uh, Bedford, and I forget Burlington um, for the high functioning. But I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on um, the lower yeah, functioning. I do actually. So it's... Um... It's funny, it's not, um, I don't know if I included it on my resume or not, because it's from a really long time ago, but when I was in my 20s, so, you know, roughly 8,000 years ago, I um, worked at a high school in Vermont um, and worked, uh, taught life skills to students um, with special needs really across the board. So I did some specialized tutoring with a more high functioning student um, and that's, where I was like helping him with a senior project. And then I uh, took students to job placements and I actually worked one-on-one -on -one with a former student of mine in the community. So I have, I have a lot of experience with um, students across the board. Um, you know, honestly, I'm not, I'm not super familiar. I lived in Vermont then. So I'm not super familiar with what the services are, but I am familiar with like the shape or what really effective services can look like. Um, and so I'd be really excited about, um, you know, sort of 
thinking about what that could look like for our town uh, based on the offering from uh, Howard Community Services, which is in Burlington, Vermont, which is an incredible organization where I worked for probably about five years as an aide. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, that's, that's my first thought. Um, you know, yeah, that's it. No, I, I just wanted to, it's, it's really not part of your position on the scholarship committee. But I kind of wanted to highlight to you, I do it all the time, you can ask my colleagues anything that I can tie into this, yeah. that um, the, you know, severe special need young adult, once they hit 22, right. the services yeah. no, pretty, pretty much go away. So if you can kind of have that extra hat on that, if you do see something, if you can either through this committee or something else forward it on. So thank you, Ms. Moore, I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, and thank you for your willingness to serve on this committee. You're obviously very well qualified. I think I missed you by about a year at Tufts. I got <laughs> in 05, but I wasn't really in the running for any uh, high-ranking academic scholarships, but uh, <laughs> you know, I certainly appreciate the work you do there. So I just have one question, similar to a question that I asked an applicant a couple weeks back, is if the Middlebury Tigers are playing the Tufts Jumbos, who do you root for? I well, assume the, the Jumbos at this point. It's Panthers. the Panthers, Panthers, yeah. actually, but I would root for the Jumbos. I like to think about, a friend of mine said once that the way she decided where to go to graduate school was to imagine the mascots fighting. And I like to imagine Jumbo trampling the Panther. So that's sort of where my thoughts go. It seems relevant. That, that works for me. Great. I, I've always, often had to answer that question because people don't think a, an elephant is the most fierce mascot but if you ever saw a picture of jumbo the elephant people would understand so yeah appreciate it Th thank you for sure. serving thank you mr hurd uh mr diggins thank you mr chair and thanks for um i'm willing to serve this position and and uh, i have to say and um, i'm really impressed because i have no idea of what your dissertation was about you know, I mean, it's like, you know, I look, I read it, it's like, I have no idea, you know, and so I'm, I'm fascinated from the point of view, although when I read your publications, I get the sense now that fanish is associated with fandom, yeah. uh, which now the, gives me some hints, but makes me even more, more impressed, and I love you. I'm happy to talk to you at great length about it at any time. Oh, you know, I mean, I love it when people expand my horizons, I mean, I think you could do that, so, so, um, look, I mean, um, after town meeting, I might just take you up on it. Actually, even during town media, I take you up. Don't tell anyone that. All right. So, so welcome aboard. <laughs> Great. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Diggins, and and thank you again, Ms. Moore. You have a very impressive resume, and uh, we really appreciate your willingness to serve on the committee. Um, so, with a, a a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurt. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We're really looking forward to it. Okay. Um, item four, uh, now onto licenses and permits uh, for approval of change of ownership, common Vittler's license, D'Agostino's food store, Samuel Peter D'Agostino. Uh, is Mr. D'Agostino with us? Mr. Chair, I don't, I don't see his name right now. Okay, all right. Well, we can move right to, to a vote then. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Uh, move approval. Mr. Diggins? Oh, sorry, sorry, I was just waiting. I thought maybe my vote happened to my audio. Um, I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Any uh, thank questions, you know, Mr. comments? Mr. Okay, Mrs. Mahan. Um, just one comment, and I did text Mr. D'Agostino to see if we would be tuning in tonight. It was just a housekeeping meeting, a uh, housekeeping matter. I, I'm assuming my colleagues will accept this as a, a friendly housekeeping um, under days and hours of operation. It's listed 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. It doesn't say the days. Um, I'm assuming they're going to keep it the same as, as as it is right now, which is Monday through Sunday. And if we could just make that housekeeping change administratively, thank you. Sure. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, okay, 
Well, that's it. With a, with a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, item five for approval, common Vittler's license, the Heights Pub, 1314 Mass Ave, James O'Rourke. Uh, is Mr. O'Rourke with us? Mr. O'Rourke and I believe his attorney are here, so I'll promote the two of them. Okay, great. Oops. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> oh, sorry, sorry. Great. Oh, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight uh, for approval of the license. Um, I'm going to open it up right away to uh, members of the board. I think people have seen the application and the, uh, the materials there. So I'll start with Mrs. Mahan. Um, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you to the applicant. Um, I know there was a, a bumpy road in the beginning, which uh, is not something... Um, I certainly was very happy with, um, and I think there were outside forces to that. But putting that aside, um, I have looked over the um, application, um, which I'm definitely amenable to, but the only thing that is not in, is someone asked me a question, I'm sorry. No, okay, sorry. My internet must be great. Um, uh, in terms of the hours of operation, um, Uniformly or traditionally, what we've done in Arlington is um, 11 o'clock is the closing, with the exception of special circumstances, which to date have been New Year's Eve. Um, establishments come in um, and ask for an extension beyond that. And they also submit a plan in terms of when food will be served and or when alcoholic beverages will um, no longer be served. Um, and I'm just stating my personal opinion, I'm in support of this application, but I am not in support of, and I'd like to hear from my colleagues, the Wednesday through Saturday, um, staying open to midnight. And, and, and the reason I say that is no other establishment has done that as well as um, in terms of the increased police patrol. I'm, I'm hearing feedback. Does someone turned on that maybe has something going on? Um, um, I'd like to keep it uniform or what we do with the rest of the town, unless it's um, New Year's Eve or something else. Um, I, I would ask the applicant and my colleagues to consider um, keeping um, the 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday through Saturday and not um, grant the Wednesday through Saturday 11 a.m to midnight, especially since um, right over the Arlington Heights pub, including across the street, as well as further up our residences that um, I'm sure we'll be getting calls from if they hear um, activity going on after midnight. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Before I turn to Mr. Hurd on that, Mr. O'Rourke or Attorney Betancourt, if you want to respond to that, I know the, the pub in, in Winchester, they may allow longer hours, but what Mrs. Mahan said has been consistent across the board in terms of the hours locally. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mike Bencourt, on behalf of Jim O'Rourke. You know, we haven't discussed the hours yet, but I uh, imagine that we're both amenable to anything that uh, is a request of the select board uh, in the town. So uh, whatever works best for Arlington works best for us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, I would ask Attorney Heim, is there any restriction on what hours we can grant? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, may I? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the, the a section uh, 12 license can be limited to 11 p.m. And that's generally what's been the sort of guiding legal sort of principle behind this. Um, you can't limit it more than that, but 11 p.m. is the sort of um, earliest you can sort of limit a section 12 license. So I believe that's been the biggest for what we've done. 
in through the chair back to attorney Heim, but the question i guess was is there a reason we cannot grant it to me? is a reason i'm sorry you, you so have, is it within our authority to grant it yeah you have the uh, discretion i'm sorry yep. sorry mr corsi matt sure yeah do go right ahead attorney Heim. yeah you have the discretion although it should be noted in your policy you have a um, hard cap at midnight uh, for any establishment. And you also have a last call of half an hour before close. Mm -hmm. So realistically speaking, you, you're both, according to state law and, and state policy, your, your 11 p.m. is pretty consistent with, within, your, within your authority in terms of limitations. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know it's certainly been our policy, so I'll you know, respect whatever the wishes of the boards are. I don't have strong feelings to limit it to 11 p.m. if the business thinks that they can be busy. And there's certainly, I'm sure, noise restrictions that would apply to the business outside of the hours of operation as far as music or, you know, people being loud within the establishment. Um, but I will turn to the board for further comments. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, and um, to you, you, Mr. Chair, I mean, um, I'd like to request I mean, that Mr. O'Rourke I mean, mute his microphone because I think that's what's causing I mean, some, some um, ambient interruptive noise. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, um, so um, I, I actually, I'm sure that I'm muted. Hmm. But hey, we just lost you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, I got the signal that I was muted and my microphone stayed with said, stayed on, said I was on. Anyways, and I, I, I understand where my colleague, Ms. Mahan, is coming from. And, um, and I think if we want to. Uh, right. We just lost you again, Mr. Diggins. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. And, um, uh, if we want to evaluate how we treat all the businesses in town, and then I'm all up for, for doing that. And I think since this is going to be the first business of its kind, perhaps. Um, in the Heights, and um, uh, I think it is maybe good to ease into it because it isn't so much, I, mean, I think, I mean, what's going on, you know, in the pub I mean, at a certain hour as much as it is what happens when people exit. I mean, they all tend to exit at once, I mean, uh, and, and, um, and sometimes they don't go home right away. It, uh, and so, so um, I would suggest that we just see how people um, behave um, and, and then, you know, if it seems like it's going smoothly and the neighborhood I mean, adapts to it, I mean, we can explore, I mean, extending those hours. Uh, but the main reason is to just treat all the businesses the same initially and, and repeat, if we want to explore um, changing things for everyone, I'm all up for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. And, and, I, and Mrs. Mahan made a motion. Would you care to second that motion? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. I would I'd be happy to second it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think, I, I, similar to Mr. Hurd, I don't have strong feelings uh, about the 11 versus 12, uh, but I certainly see the point of precedent and, and caution that my colleagues, uh, Ms. Mahan and Mr. Diggins have raised. I just want to verify uh, with, with the applicants though, that if I understand correctly, that if we do restrict this to 11 p.m., that that will not, in your view, you know, create problems with the business plan or, or viability. Thank you, uh, um, Mr. Helmuth. I, I will say that um, for the nature of the business, um, Friday and Saturday night especially, um, it really would impact sales and um, I, I think it would be difficult for us. Uh, but uh, you know, if it were extended Friday and Saturday to midnight, I think that would go a long way. Um, you know, and, and making sure that this business starting off in a very difficult uh, economic climate, um, you know, would, would have some legs and it would work out well. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to balance, you know, is, is exactly that point. Um, and, and also, you know, I mean, the town's interest is, is in economic development and, um, you know, that the, the Heights Business District is one that we've put a lot of work into um, cultivating. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, want, I wonder if through you, if the town manager might have any insight via the planning department about um, resident views 
on this type of business and vis-a-vis -vis some of the hours and, and potential noise concerns. I don't know if we've done any in, in, a, in a study that we've done with the Heights business districts or if any of my other colleagues would know, you know, if that provides us any insight at all into, into their views about this. Uh, Mr. Chapterling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So Mr. Helmuth, I know there has been some surveying done of what's desired for uses in the Heights. Um, and I think that was actually the, a survey that talked about uh, there being a desire for a pub um, yeah. that I've heard in prior conversations, the applicant uh, talk about being a reason that, that led them to the Heights. Mm -hmm. um, I can't recall that there was the specificity of times of service. I, I could take a look at it. I, I don't know that I could find it while the board's deliberating, but I, I don't recall that level of specificity. And if I may, Mr. Chair, as a follow-up, um, are you aware of any, any people writing in or contacting your officer or the town or, or, the, or uh, the board, you know, out of concern about a pub that might go to midnight or, or late hours in general? I don't believe, I can't recall receiving concern about a, a pub in general and not specifically about midnight. Uh, and, and finally, and this is just, if you'll just, uh, Mr. Chair, just in, indulge my, my newness. Uh, procedurally speaking, if, what would be involved in starting with a restriction to 11, but extending it to 12, um, you know, what kind of steps would, would the applicant need to take and we would need to take to, to do that? Is that a big deal, little deal, somewhere in between? If I could refer to that to Attorney Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Basically, they'd have to put in an application to amend, uh, amend the terms of their license. So uh, locally, uh, not a big deal here. I'm not sure what amount of work that takes with respect to the state level. Um, you know, it tends to be a parallel process with respect to the ABCC, but locally, not, not, not particularly difficult. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually curious about what my uh, Mr. DeCorsi thinks. Uh, just uh, out of, I, I, as you can tell, I'm, I'm really juggling these these two concerns of you wanting wanting to give this business a good chance, wanting to give. I, I, I'm aware of, of the town manager's um, re report. Uh, many of my neighbors have been very interested in this in this business, wanting to succeed. Um, at the same time, I want to make sure we don't make a mistake by you know. Um, making an exception we don't want to make. So you know, I'm I'm open to either one, but I but I will confess that I'm. I'm a little bit torn, so I'm not sure where I'm at with that right now. Thank you. Okay, all right. Well, we may take this around for another lap then. <laughs> I, 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 I feel certainly Wednesday and Thursday, I, I have issues with being open past 11. I think one of the, the questions is up the heights, there, there really hasn't been anything up there, so we don't really have any experience. I do know other um, pubs or restaurants in town, we have limited to 11 with the extent of the, um, New Year's, as Mrs. Mahan said. So um, I, I almost lean towards 11 for now with an invitation to come back and, and to us after a few months um, for Friday and Saturdays beyond 11. But that's why don't, um, if, if other members have thoughts on that, uh, why, don't, why don't we discuss that? I'll, I'll just go around again uh, to Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Um, again, I'd like to have uniformity across town and recognize that there are residences um, not typical to Town Tavern, Monotomy Grill, um, not your average Joe's. They do not have residences directly over and across the street um, from an establishment. This establishment does. And I'd also like to um, move forward cautiously, um, taking into account the history that um, the Arlington Heights pub um, has had with the town of Arlington, which has not been as smooth um, for outside reasons, which I think should not have factored in. So in terms of a trust level, um, I would not want to take, I, I'd like this business to operate as the other businesses have, who do not have residences directly over them and across from them, stay at 11 p.m. Um, and then if this establishment or any of the other establishments that I uh, mentioned and did not mention wanna come in the future and go to 12, and then we can have um, also a report from police and fire in terms of uh, what's 
their opinion is in terms of the patrol efforts that they need to have in place. Um, Common Ground's another area which does not have residents around this. So I think this is not the test case. And I think I heard in the beginning that they were amenable to uh, going to the 11 p.m. So I'm, I'm pretty firm in, I, I think people are getting a sense that I don't feel like for myself personally, this establishment started off on the best foot with the town, town of Arlington. That's my personal opinion. I think there were outside issues that should not have played into it and it did, but I'm putting that all aside. And I wanna treat them the same as we have other um, pubs, taverns, et cetera, um, that we have in town. So I'm very adamant that no to midnight right now, let's go to 11 p.m. And then if they come back or any other establishment with a business plan that shows that there is the um, uh, clientele that can carry them into midnight and we can balance it with what the community policing um, effort needs to support that. but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm standing by my original motion, which is approving um, Sunday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. And I should, we, we've been talking about the timing. I did want to say at the beginning that I am very excited about this. I do live in the Heights and a lot of my neighbors and people that are around are really excited for this to to open up and fill a, go a void in the neighborhood in um, up, up in the Heights District. So, I, I mean, again, I'm fine approving it at 11 a.m. for uniformity, but I think what we should do is have a kind of a global discussion about the 11 a.m. cutoff for all of our businesses, and not particularly just this one, and just see if that still makes sense and if we want to approve businesses for to be open later on a case-by-case -case basis because there are certainly some of these businesses are competing with with uh, establishments in neighboring towns that are open till one or two at night which we certainly didn't we're not interested in that type of business but I would say I don't want to you know invite the public too too much into my my own personal business, but you know, I, we, I have friends and we have kids and we get tired and our kids go to bed at nine o'clock. And by the time we get out, it's nine 15 and sometimes it's nine 30. And if we go down to one of the taverns in Arlington and it's nine 30 and you're there for an hour. So I, th I think there is, this, you could serve a need in Arlington if it was open a little later on the weekends. Um, but again, I'm happy to keep uniformity with the other establishments in town and and uh, approve this, but I think we should have a more global discussion about um, how we treat the restaurants in town and whether or not it makes sense on weekends to have a midnight end time for some of the businesses. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins, any further comments? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so I, I, I like your proposal, uh, Mr. Chair. It, uh, uh, I, I think regardless of how we vote tonight, it, uh, we should explore it, um, the possibility of extending hours um, townwide. Uh, and, and I will say, even though it doesn't serve alcohol or anything, uh, we, out here in the East, we have an ice cream shop uh, that is open until two o'clock uh, in the morning or something like that. But anyways, people are, are out and about at that ice cream shop, especially in the summertime uh, when the windows are open and you hear them. Uh, but you know what, I mean, uh, I love living in Arlington. I love being in an urban, quasi-urban environment. And for me, that's just me, part of the price um, that I pay for being in an area that has lots of people. And so my point is that I'm not averse to it. I just want some uniformity. It, uh, so, because uh, it just helps in, in the process of making what we do um, seem um, equitable I mean, to all parties. That's it, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dickinson. And Helmuth, any further comments? Thank you, yeah. Um, I, I think that's persuasive. The uniformity and fairness argument, I think does make a lot of sense. Um, I, you know, and I, I wanna echo uh, Mr. Hurd's uh, comments that I think that we do need to uh, to try to be forward thinking, but, but while being appropriately cautious, Ms. Mahan's cautions are well well taken. Um, but so, so I'm okay with, with starting at 11 p.m., uh, but I like Mr. DeCourcy's idea of, of sending, you know, of inviting the applicant to, to stay, to keep the conversation going with us um, and maybe uh, the board can contemplate um, 
you know, supporting the businesses, supporting the economy, serving residents. Um, if, if, if later hours across the board would be something that could be done in, in a responsible way, um, I'd like to look at that. Okay, great. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Helmuth. So I, th I think we've reached consensus. I do want to say, Mr. O'Rourke, I wish you the best of luck with the, the new business. It is long anticipated in the Heights, and, and I wish you the best of luck with the business once you um, get it underway, assuming we have a positive vote here, which I think we will. Um, so we have a, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, a second by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, yes. And I just want to clarify my motion is that my, me and my colleagues are voting for Sunday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yes, thank you. And Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, item six for approval, Arlington Farmers Market 2021, uh, Patsy Kramer. Uh, is she here with us tonight or? She, yes, she is, I think. Yes, she is here. Okay, good. And uh, Mr. Chair, I. Um, Sam Diagostino has joined us if you um, care to, to to have him speak to the board, but if not, that's okay as well. Just I, Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I mean, I'll, I'll leave it open to him. We, I don't know if he's aware we've already voted it, but if he wanted to address the board, I, I certainly could allow him to do that for a minute or so. It's, it's um, I, I, um, I can't. Why don't you I promote him? And, and, yeah, I can't. I can't communicate him with. No, him no, of course not. Why don't you promote him, and we'll tell him we took the vote. And if he wants to address the board, we can do that for a minute or so. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you, Mr. D'Agostino. Mr. D'Agostino, can you hear us? Yes, hi, I'm sorry. Hi guys, I'm sorry about that. Oh, no problem. So the, the good news is, congratulations, we approved the uh, transfer of the license, but since you came on, if you wanted to address the board uh, shortly, uh, we're doing this a little out of order, but uh, we yeah, wanted to no, give you that opportunity. I, yeah, no, thank you, no, I, I appreciate it. Um, hadn't been a part of a meeting like this before. So uh, as long as everything looks good on your end, everything works for me. Okay. And if I, if I could, Mr. Chair, I just want to double check. Yes, Mrs. Mrs. Mahan. Sure. Mr. D'Agostino, I made sort of a housekeeping motion. I want to make sure that this was your intention. Um, for hours of operation, you put 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., but you didn't put the days. So I assumed it's the days would be, uh, it would be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday, or do you go to 10 p.m.? We go to 9 p.m. Okay, and it's it's um, Monday through Sunday, seven a.m. to nine p.m. Right, right. Okay, correct. It was a housekeeping thing that I thought you probably wanted. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Great, thank you, Mr. Dexino. Okay, thanks. Okay, all right. Now, Mrs. Kramer's here with us I, for the farmers market. So, um, we're, it looks like we're going to have a farmers market this year. There's a request before us. I'll turn it over to Patsy Kramer to tell us a little bit about it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, last year we did have a successful year, even though the pandemic is just underway, uh, but we heard, got a lot of feedback that people felt comfortable shopping outside uh, and it really worked well. I, I met last week with uh, Pat Martin from the Board of Health just to uh, be begin to get a sense of what the good guidelines would be this year. And both of us at this point are sort of at a loss as to what the state is going to be recommending for guidelines. And mostly what I'm hearing is they really are telling us to rely primarily on our local board of health in terms of the guidelines. So uh, Pat and I certainly will continue to work on that. We're, we're quite sure that, that we will uh, be requiring people to wear masks if they're at the market and to continue to socially distance. Um, one of the things that will be different this year is that people will be able to pick out their own produce. Last year, they had to point to it and then the vendor would put it in a basket and that slowed things up considerably. So I'm hoping that by people being able to pick their own produce and uh, then get uh, go for checkout, that'll move things along. 
Um, but certainly Pat and I will continue to watch for state guidelines and then I will continue to just work closely with the Board of Health in um, uh, making sure that things run smoothly this year. So we're hoping that you'll be open to us having it again. Great, no, thank you very much. I'm gonna turn it over to the board for questions or comments. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Uh, I move approval, no comments. Great, thank you. Um, Mr. Helmuth. I'll uh, second that uh, gladly and uh, no comments or questions. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. So look forward to the farmer's market. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gone down there five, 10 minutes and I've stayed for an hour, hour and a half. Um, and I don't need to necessarily answer to this question. I understand that Ms. Kramer Patsy has said that um, uh, we're gonna encourage people to wear masks. Um, I, I would just leave it to you and Pat in terms of sort of having an action plan if um, a situation arises where the mask issue does come into play that maybe before the farmer's market, you may have already done this, sort of have a conversation um, with uh, community policing just to see what you can avail yourself of that opportunity and how to de-escalate that. So that's well, just a comment. Yeah. Last year I had just one person that challenged me and wanted to walk in without a mask. And I just I just said to him he had to wear one. Uh, and he says, says who? And I said, you, you know why this is going on. Uh, and he didn't make any further efforts. If somebody really got belligerent, I think I wouldn't hesitate to call the police and ask them to come and, and just uh, reinforce my authority. I think it's very important to give that message loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Patsy. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Happy to support it. I love having an opportunity to walk over the farmer's market when and it's right across my office. So I have to put it in my, my calendar this year because I generally see drive by and see the farmer's market being taken down. I'm like, oh, <laughs> got it again. But it, yeah, we got to get you over there earlier, right? Right. So it is certainly great to, to have that and a real asset to the town. So I appreciate all the work that you do with that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and I too am excited to see it be coming back this year. So uh, looking forward to to um, to having it and thank you for all the work that you're doing on it. Um, so with a motion by Mr. Diggins, second by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Okay, item seven, a request for a third parking space on street overnight parking at 18 Swan Place. Jessica Scowcroft, uh, is Ms. Scowcroft with us tonight, uh, Mr. Chatelain? She is, would you like me to promote her, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. Good evening, Ms. Scowcroft. Oh, she's, is she already on? I, I, I think she is. Yeah, she appears to be here. Let me... Um... Hello? Hello. Hi, I am yes, here. Good evening. Sorry. Oh, great. Hi. Okay, good evening, Ms. Scowcroft. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm wondering if you could provide us a little a bit of information on the request and then I will uh, open it to questions from members of the board. Sure. Um, I've been living here for about three years. I live, uh, I have four roommates, so there's five of us in the house. Um, there are four people who, uh, I'm sorry, there are four people who drive. Uh, two of us have passes. One person can afford uh, the municipal lot at the 365 rate a year plus the 50 a month, but I have another person who cannot afford it, um, who's been greatly affected by the pandemic economically. Um, and uh, yeah, we just, we have five people and we are the, we happen to be the only building on the street that does not have a driveway. Uh, it's a two family home and no one has a driveway. So we're kind of at a disadvantage um, and, you know, I've been living here for about three years, so I've noticed that at night when I get home 
kind of late at night. I, I work at night and uh, I noticed that there's always several spaces uh, open on the street. So, you know, all those factors um, made me want to ask for an extra pass if possible. Okay. And, and before I open up, just for clarification, are one of the passes, have you been issued one of the passes or is it two? I, I, do, I do have one of the passes. Okay. okay. All right. Um, all right. So with that, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you for uh, the request. Um, we've dealt with a number of the, the overnight parking requests over the past few years. And what we've tried to really do is have a pretty set bit of criteria when, when um, we get the request, just so we have uniformity across the board because overnight parking is certainly an issue that affects a lot of people in town. Um, and one of them you meet is that you don't have a driveway parking, but I am not, unless the other members of the board can correct me, I'm not aware of any instance where we've issued two more than one overnight parking permit per unit of the building and where you have two with two um, permits already. I think it would open up a whole can of worms for us and that we'd have a lot. Next week we have 800 applications if in the instance where we had two per those two units. Um, so I would move no action on the request but, and then the second half of, in your letter, there are, were some parking concerns on Swan Place. And Mr. Chair, if, if appropriate, I would refer as it, it's similar to correspondence received, um, the second paragraph of Mr. Scowcroft's letter to either TAC or Mr. Chapdelaine, whatever is most appropriate. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fine. Mr. Chapdell, I, I, and it may be the Parking Advisory Committee for the referral. I just want to check with that with Mr. Chapdell. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Hurdy. I, the Parking Advisory Committee actually deliberated on a very similar request on, um, I think, it, I keep confusing it, Avon Place or Whittemore. Whittemore. Uh, a, a few, a few, Whittemore, a few blocks down. So I think the Parking Advisory Committee could uh, look into Ms. Scowcroft's requests and um, advise on what might be reasonable or not. Okay. I'd just like to clarify something. So there were two parking passes, uh, were two family house, there were two parking passes issued um, as a standard for both sides of this house. So the two parking passes is normal. I'm just request, requesting one more, that's all. Okay, yeah, one per unit, right? Is that, that that's how it went? Yes, two on each okay. side. Okay, okay, um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second Mr. Hurd's uh, motion. And as the, I miss Kevin Grayley dearly because he was the senior member of the board, and now I am the senior member of the board. Um, we we've, we've been um, uniform in terms of um, allowing overnight parking um, in front of the residence. Sometimes one family, sometimes two, but not extending it beyond that. Um, the other thing I would note is the person for whom the relief is being sought is not the applicant, Ms. Scowcroft. It's for her, one of her roommates. Um, and if we were to grant this, besides the precedent that Mr. Hurd spoke to, um, we would be denying because we already have the maps in front of that residence of two cars parking overnight. And if we extended it, the residence on either side there which should also have that opportunity would be denied of that. And I understand you have four or five roommates um, in one part of the two family, but what we've traditionally um, factored into our deliberations amongst other things um, is that uh, we don't, do not grant more than two um, overnight parking requests per unit in a two family. So for all those reasons, um, I would second Mr. Hurd's motion of no action. Thank you. And, and the other thing I would say, and, I, and I'm not being cheeky or sar sarcastic about this, is if your roommate um, continues to be a resident of Arlington, we do have a COVID-19 relief fund um, that he or she could apply to if the 
$301 a day, $365 a year um, parking fee is um, not doable or too cumbersome for them. Um, well, they it's also $50 a day every month. So that comes out to about a grand a year. So that's pretty expensive. It, it's not $50 a day. So it's fifty dollars um, a month for the daytime plus the three sixty five per year, so that equals about almost a thousand dollars a year for parking. Okay, usually when a board member speaks, they're not interrupted. So you're telling me you're looking for your fourth roommate to be able to park their car twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, day and night, because they're not going anywhere. No, no, I'm done with this. This is done. Okay. Okay. No, I, I, I'm, I'm just going by what you said. You said they're going to get $50 a day, a ticket, which it's not, it's 15. If you park during the day and you go beyond the two hours. I'm talking about the municipal lot. The municipal lot is $50 a month. So that's 12 months and then 365 a year. That comes out to be much more than 365. That's, that's why it's such an expense. I right. can tell you that no one has any compassion for the fact that we are the only people on the street who do not have a driveway. There are, you know, you guys did a study. You did it. About okay, um, could, Mr. Chair, if I cannot yeah. have Ms. Scowcroft interrupt me, she's asking for an overnight parking for her fourth roommate, who is not the proponent here tonight. It's one dollar a day for overnight parking. It's not fifty dollars a month. It's anywhere from depending on the year, 24 to $31 a month. Um, and she, we have granted her overnight parking. So again, I would second Mr. Hurd's motion of no action. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, I support the motion. Okay, and Mr. Diggins. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I, I do support uh, the second part of the letter going to um, the uh, Parking Advisory Committee. You know, just uh, I think it's worthy of um, some exploration. So that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Okay. Well, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, actually, two part motion. Um, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Um, yes, and just a clarification, the second part of the motion is to refer this somewhere else. Am I correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a referral to the Parking Advisory Committee. Uh, um, That's since the my daytime issues with Kickstand Cafe. Okay, I'm, I'm in favor of that. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Chair. Sure. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, thank you, Attorney Heim. Um, last item tonight is new business. Uh, Attorney Heim. No new business. Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very briefly, uh, today the long awaited federal guidance on the American Rescue Plan was released. Uh, there was an eight page summary fact sheet as well as 150 plus page detailed guidance document. Uh, myself and Sandy Pooler, the deputy town manager, have already started to dive in. And I know the National League of Cities and the Mass Municipal Association will all be an, uh, also be analyzing to try to provide us deeper understanding from that those guidance documents. But hopefully within the next few days, uh, we will be able to more clearly articulate how we think these funds will be able to be expended to the benefit of Arlington. And I'll certainly share that with the board and the public. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. No, no business. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Diggins. Uh, briefly, uh, uh, I um, I saw uh, Marika Palka uh, for the first time since December of um, 2019 when I was getting her advice uh, whether to um, run for the select board, and it was really great seeing her. I mean, when I saw her, it, I thought of 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 um, Yoda. I mean, uh, just and, and I love Yoda. It's like Mama Yoda, Kate, and, and so. Um, it, it, it's just warm my heart to see her. So, so I just had to share that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Hurd. Uh, the only thing that just popped into my head is just to ask the town manager, if we can get, we had had an agenda item probably a month or so back about the guidance for outdoor performances. And I know we're gonna go back and sort of form mesh, you know, with the parks and recreation and whatnot, but are, are we gonna be able to put that on a further agenda item? you know, to, to discuss that 
as we get into May here. <laughs> Mr. Chair, may I? Certainly. Um, I'll, I'll keep it uh, brief. It's, um, I, I believe what we ended up realizing after working with Parks and Rec is that there were no lands under the jurisdiction of the select board that it actually pertained to. Um, but let me verify that. And if not, we can bring it right back to the board for, okay. um, for final approval. All right. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yes, very briefly, because I know we all have to jump over to town <laughs> meeting. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions as my colleagues have. I spoke to the chair about this uh, about an hour or two ago. Um, because of COVID-19, I know we're hopefully getting back to a new normal. And right now, August 1st is a date that's out there. Um, but in order to have town day, which we cannot do this year, um, we need to start booking acts, entertainment, and ancillary services um, back in January. So uh, people were saying, you know, can we get it started? It might be a quick thing and still do it. Um, it's not a matter of previous years. We open in April, close in June, um, town day applications. That's just for booths. Um, we need to have done stuff starting back in January. So the traditional town day in September cannot happen um, this year, unfortunately. Um, not sure if something, some other conversation for, a, a, I don't wanna say de-escalated, a mini version of something can happen in September and maybe it's the road race um, that we traditionally have and couldn't have last year, we have this year. Um, and then if I could, Mr. Chair, just very briefly, I've got a lot of questions on this as have you and my colleagues. Um, people are asking about um, when town hall is opening. You know, I understand the uh, Governor Baker has indicated August 1st in terms of that's when we're ready to open. I'd like to ask the town manager, is that date, is August 1st our date in terms of opening town hall back to a semi-normal and or if that's our date, if circumstances change, could it possibly be earlier? So I would say the answer to, uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would say the answer to both is yes. We're planning towards that date um, as outlined by the governor, but if uh, the situation allows it earlier is possible. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And, and just very briefly, town meeting is gonna extend for a little while. I may schedule a meeting next Monday night that, because it looks like town meeting is going to extend for a while and we'll continue to have shorter meetings. So uh, just keep your eyes. I, I'll notify board members if that's the case later this week. Um, with that, I, I will turn to Mrs. Mahan for a motion to adjourn. Um, I'd like to take a motion that um, uh, we suspend the select board meeting um, and we reconvene with the opening of town meeting uh, May 10th and that the select board will remain in session concurrent um, with the town meeting and that our adjour adjournment will also be concurrent with the adjournment of the regular town meeting of 2021. Great. Do we have a second? And so Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Okay, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? See you all in two minutes. Yes. <laughs> yes, two minutes to spare. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. see you soon. <laughs>